Hey, uh, welcome back. It's been a couple weeks. I've been gone for, uh, went to Scotland with my job. And yeah, I have a 40 an hour a week job. And I had to go. So it was fun. Scotland, not fun. It was a good ship, but spending a lot of hours on board. And it was cold. Um, well, so we haven't gamed in a couple weeks. And so now we're back to gaming. And here we go. Uh, this is for the gaming that took place just a couple days ago on the, not a couple days ago, but on the 11th of April, 2017. Uh, so how are you guys doing down there? Are you still hanging in with, with my series here? Well, uh, got the gaming guys together on Tuesday. At first, just Joel, Chris, and Alex... And we played uh, Earth 210. 210, they're still on their first day of being on uh, Black World, as we called it. And uh, they're still on their Fantasia devices, running three different scenarios. Uh, there's a fourth team, Magnetos, who's running their fourth scenario. But we really only played those three. And it's a little bit of progress. I, I'm jumping things ahead because... It's taken a while to get through these worlds, and with me going underway probably most of this fall, um, I thought I need to get this stuff done, so knock it out. Anyways, so first off, we start off with uh, Alex's team, the Argonauts. They are still on a tropical island scenario. The tr Argonauts, Alex's team is made up of Hope, Bruce, Monet, Charles, David, Tessa, and Mindy. Just sticking with first names, keep it quick. And yeah, uh, what is what Wanda sent them here as part of the deal is already starting to happen. Relationships are starting to form on this team. And mostly, I it could be just because his team is mostly younger people. Uh, but they're getting a lot closer. Alex and Hope uh, seem to be for, forming a bond. Monet and Charles definitely have formed a bond. David and Mindy could be, and Tessa and Bruce, which would seem weird, but she's a little bit more mature. So, um, and it, and they sat around the campfire talking. Uh, Bruce had them talking about a lot of their fears and experiences, um, and how they will deal with that in the future because he's trying to get to know them to see how he wants to. Mold them into a team. Although, the reason that they they made this deal was this first two weeks was for a vacation. Because they're not going to get much when they get back to 210. So, um, and then we go from there to Chris's team, Stars. Chris's team, Stars, uh, th their little vacation is in Disney. Disney World, that is. Epcot. They, would la they left the... Sorry for all the creaking here. I'm like on some ship underway. No. Yeah, you don't hear the water. You just hear the creaking. More like a creepy upstairs attic. Anyways. Uh, Chris's team stars uh, made up of Chris Kamala, Clarice, Mary, Wally, Sam, Peter, and Gwen. Relationships starting to form there. They uh, walk through Epcot, take the monorail back to Magic Kingdom, and they're actually staying in the Magic Castle this day, or uh, this night. Um, and as they get closer to there, watching the electric light parade as it's you know doing its thing, fireworks going off, um, Chris actually takes the hand of Kamala, um, friendly gesture, and... Uh, we've already seen that Gwen and Peter seem to be nicely working out. Maybe there's some romance between Wally and um, Mary, as well as maybe a little bit between Sam and Clarice. So, there's some format. Yeah, mostly younger team. So, most of the time it's, it's just hanging out and having fun, talking. Not a lot of power usage. And... Um, 
we can't expect them to go faster. They don't seem to be pu being pushed. They don't have an extremely mature person like Monet on Argonauts to start pushing relationships forward. But uh, then we go to Omega Dawn. Um, the little bit that we played on Omega Dawn, they're getting ready for to go to bed. They finished their kayak, uh, not kayak, you whitewater rafting down the Colorado River, staying at one of the embankments, uh, camping there all night, um, making a fire, telling stories of how they started out. Christopher Lord, the leader of the team, and Omega Dawn, um, who's on Omega Dawn, you're asking? Uh, it's Christopher Lord, uh, Adriana, Megan, Satana, Calvin, Sam, Scott, and Barda. And... And they're chilling out by the fire, telling stories of how they kind of started out. Really, only Chris has... Yeah, he talks about the other Omega Dons and what that was like for him. Barda has some stories from Apocalypse. And it uh, really gets the older people like, wow, that's kind of crazy. Um, other things she's done on Apocalypse. But a lot of the other ones don't have a lot of stories. Adriana does tell about being an internship as an archaeologist under Dr. Jones. And, well, when, they, when they're turning in for the bed, uh, Sam helps Zatanna make her tent, but she does pull Calvin into kind of helping her warm up the tent a little bit, which is kind of cool. They're both city types. Um, Calvin and, uh, yeah, um, Alan and the rest of them kind of, Make their own peace of mind. Adriana and Barda spent a little bit more time talking around the fire as we concluded this gaming. Because uh, Frank showed up and then we go to uh, Clef Land with a D. And um, yeah, we're still on uh, day two around uh, 1300 in the afternoon. Because Frank's there, we game mostly with... Uh, a bunch of royals that are, have gone off together. The the team of Prince Daniel Ritz, uh, grandson of the king. Uh, Seth Corso, who is... Uh, well, oh wait, Daniel is the son of Prince Christopher... No, Chris, Prince Carter and um, Donna Day. And um, Seth Corso, who is the son of Frank and Zahara, uh, Frank the Duke, and uh, he, but Seth's the second son, so. Um, and then Anders, who is the uncle to the new Marquis, Chris, yeah, Chris Pr Prentice. And. Last but not least, James, who is the son of Tempest and uh, Marie Devereaux, Anna Devereaux, and I'm not sure if it's Anna or Marie, but um, yeah, so it's James Lord, um, Anders Prentice, and Seth Corso, and Prince Daniel Ritz. They, uh, we last left them off, they were just north of the mounds on the Great Plains, and uh, or the Sea of Grass. Maybe that will be the name from now on. Sea of Grass. And this is where they, um, at the mounds they had fought us from barbarian clans. And then uh, from the minds of one of them was triggered to go up north. From one of the barbarians that they wind up killing. Was triggered to go up north towards these stones. Uh, there's these stone outcrops pushed out of the ground and last that we played um, they got in a fight with uh, four Dren. Dren are children of the denizens antlered uh, peoples from the south and underground antlered people you know underground and um, the elves and so they have pointed ears but they have white hair, kind of dark skin, uh, but they have horns, uh, just small pointed ones. And uh, 
They're centered, uh, their culture centered around, of course, being in the dark, being underground. Dark elves as uh, the team wanted to call them demon elves or demon drow, but they don't know this thing drow because drow is a TSR word and I technically can't use it. So they're the dren, the chill dren, the dren. And uh, they defeated all but one of them. James was holding it and um, using his TK. James has this power to be able, if he's around any power, he can pull any power he's ever been around but one at a time. So he's pulling TK and he's using the TK to hold this Dren. And uh, it was a Dren who actually been a shadow mage. He has a shadow cloak um, on him. And they try to get him to reveal information of which he wasn't going to do. These guys are, they're, uh, you know, very sincere about what they're doing very much killers in, on their own right but they were not expecting to run into seth who seth killed rest most of the rest of the team because he's raised as a coda um his mom was a coda and also he's a little bit of a show-off personality wise and says it on a sheet mind you and so he doesn't hold back and if anybody wanted him to hold back they're certainly not saying it Passive aggressive, maybe I don't know. <laughs> Just decent, um, but anyways. So he's holding him there. They try to shake some information out of him. Doesn't happen. Slam him to the ground, and James changes him to uh, changes his power to telepathy and puts the dude to sleep. But Anders, uh, and Anders is uh, he has been from Earth originally, but now he's an elf, and he's played D and D, and he knows. Hey, you got to strip off you know, items off your enemies to see what good you can get out of them. So he does that. As he's doing that, he wakes up the guy because it was only asleep. It wasn't a, you know, knockout sort of thing. And the guy wakes up, stabs him in the hand, and they capture him again back to telekinetics and hold him still. And Daniel, meanwhile, is at the it, at just making light go down the tunnel to make sure that if anybody's coming that they see him. Because Daniel has light powers, and he can even turn to light and teleport very far distances. Anywhere he can go, where light can go in a second. So uh, Anders has the ability of, like, of a time spot, so t and he also can control time. And Seth's powers is... Um, Besides sensing emotions and life forces, which originally gave them the heads up that there were Dren underground. Uh, besides that, he can um, send somebody through the, the various senses very fast, like amplify their senses really fast. And it goes very, very, very strong sight, very strong high, uh, very strong sight, hearing, taste, feeling very fast like cycling through them which causes the the person to freak out they, they can't pay attention to their surroundings you can also do the same thing with emotions and send them through highs lows back and forth really really fast and just basically incapacitates them so he does this to the dren and um eventually he does he see as daniel's recovering from his wounds i mean not daniel anders anders Stops time to recover from his wounds, takes the sword, uh, the knife out, and realize, uh, as, as, in stop time, he can, he's healing. Well, as long as time is stopped. While time is moving, he heals like anybody else. So it's not great. Um, and he is, um, when this is done, Seth goes about. Um, finding some of the other weapons on some of the other people he killed. One of them turns out to be this magical sword, uh, sort of the Underdark sort of thing. And it, in the darkness, will display like a, um, a grid map of the whole Underdark that he, he, you can see from one location. You could look down and up, kind of like Google Earth. You move it around, you look. Yeah, it's kind of got that sort of thing. And it also lets him see if he has it, out just touching him gives him the grill the grid but um pulling it out lets him see others out there 
And I can't really say why he's seeing those certain others, but he sees them like as little red dots moving around on the grids in the darkness. Um, he also has, has these little flasks that he found. Now, like the Dark Elves in my past had uh, spiders in them that would eat a person alive really fast. Well, these have darkness in them, and it basically um, dissipates them into shadows. And he puts one of these into the mouth of this Dren so, uh, Shadow Mage who doesn't, of course, get to use any of his magic or anything and forces the thing to break and causing the guy to die immediately um, turned into shadow. Well, in about three seconds. So, and there's a lot of pain. And, and he disappears. All that's left is the armor of which... Anders, an elf, puts on these Dren armor. He's feeling this vibration feeling like, but he does, he just blows it off. Hey, you know, that's it must be because it's magical. Well, it's Dren armor, and they're not really pro-elf armor. But puts it on. Daniel and the rest of them, um, that, well, they, they get together and they decide, hey, let's check out this tunnel. So they check out the tunnel and they go pretty far down and deep, maybe about 40 feet underground, and to find an outpost. And these, this is kind of a little uh, bunk area where the Dren have been settled guarding people at this tunnel area. And maybe these guys would go and do sacking missions on the nearby towns and stuff because they, they have maps. They, and they have this candle thing. And, uh, it's good for infravision. It shows everything around in sight. So Anders, who has that vision, and James, who can take that power of vision and switch to see in the dark. But Daniel and Seth can't see in the dark. And Daniel, even though he has light powers, doesn't like the dark. So um makes it feel really uncomfortable. But they're other under... Dark powers don't work well in light. So, anyways, they they find that there's a couple um, foot lockers and stuff, and they go through them and finding a variety of things. One of them is a magically closed foot locker that was um, owned by the guy with the long sword, uh, and the underdark sword. And they find a lot of stuff in there: jewels, uh, books, and. Um, yeah, just a lot of stuff like that. Uh, you know, more daggers. Um, and then they find this ring. Uh, these rings, these four, four rings, uh, of which that was inside the little jewelry box. The, the rings, I think Andrew's the first to try it on. And he, as he, uh, wishes it to work. The other one of the other foot lockers starts moving around, and it they they pass up the foot locker when it was already doing some sort of scratch noise. They're like, "Crap, I don't want to deal with this," so they skipped it. But now they open it up, and it's a like a a hand about the size of a small dog, and um, not a small dog, but a medium sized dog, more or less, a hand. And so it's walking around on its tips, and its um, nails are sharpened to points, and it's not. Like dead, like smelling dead stuff. Um, but it's not alive um, because Seth, who can sense life force, doesn't sense anything from it. No emotions or anything. But both Seth and, I mean, both Anders and Daniel take their time at controlling, using the ring to control it. And it basically does whatever they say. Make a fist, uh, jump, move around and follow us, sort of stuff. So they leave, head back outside, and by using his time spot power, Anders takes them all back to Avatalos, uh, to the time spot there called the Tabernacle. And which, once they arrive there, uh, most of the city is alerted to their presence because they're like, ooh, on high, high alert due to the Marquis recently dying. They ask some citizens about what are the Dren, 
They find out a little bit more information. They also don't like the Dren. The Dren are bad guys. Evil. In, their, in the elves' minds, anyways. So, they move on. Uh, they go to the castle, the Pine Castle there, um, to... Because they also... Yeah, just before they left, they found... Uh, they got text from their families real, uh, finding out that uh, the Marquis has died. So, Anders finds out his brother, Alex, died... And want to come home and figure that out. So that's why they came back. Maybe they they, they had a little a lot of stuff already, so they were kind of done on their little adventure. But they're they're building up their equipment and uh, as adventurers in this world. And who knows where Seth and Daniel and Anders? None of them are in line to any throne or anything. But Anders is kind of like the ambassador to Claflin, being an adventurer. Would definitely help him relate to most of the people there. So next, um, yeah, they get they get to the Pine Castle, greeting a lot. Like Seth's family is there, his his brothers um, and sisters are there, so he greets them. Anders sees his nieces and nephews. James, there's nobody here he knows, uh, as well as Daniel, and uh, well, James actually knows uh, a lot of the people there. From Red Planet. And Daniel knows them from that. But not family wise. So. Um, and that's where we last left off. Yeah. 20 minute short video. Hope, hopefully. Um, my fans or subscribers. Can get through this. And. Uh, hey. If, if you're watching this. And you want to know more. Leave comments below. And. Or also hit subscribe. You want to follow me up weekly. Uh, I'll keep this up to date as long as I keep gaming. And I, I will like to make better videos. I didn't add any pictures this time because it's really quick and I just want to get to it. Um, not a lot of gaming. May have new gamer this week. Frank may be having his son Nick play. So we'll see. We'll see. So adios. Arrivederci. Ciao. Peace.